a look now at solving trigonometric equations. We're going to start by looking at some of the trigonometric identities. Now, page 33 at the bottom of the page has all of the trigonometric identities that you would have learned in pre-calc or trig. Um, I just highlighted the ones that we use most often in calculus. So one that we use quite often is the Pythagorean identities. Most often this one, but I'm actually going to show you an example in a little bit where we use this second one. They're all kind of the same idea. Obviously, Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean identities, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, so you get the idea. We're not going to go into where all of these came from, just that they exist and that you might need to use them. Um, reciprocal identities, you use them all, all of the time. So hopefully we know that the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, and the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. And so quite often we will need to do some um, replacements in equations, uh, replacing tangent with one over cotangent and so forth, or vice versa. Double angle formulas. Um, the one used most often is sine 2 theta equal 2 sine theta cosine theta, but really all of those are the double angle formulas and may or may not be used. The power reducing formulas we don't use often, but again, it's just one more tool in your tool belt in addition to the other identities that are found on page 33. We're going to start with two pretty straightforward examples. The first one is super straightforward. The second one's a little bit harder, and then we'll get a little bit harder on the next page as well. So when we're solving this, a lot of it has to do with how well we know our uh, unit circle. So again, I've copied it here and don't feel like you have to memorize it. But like I said, it's, it is helpful to memorize that first quadrant, but we're just going to look at it while we solve this. This equation says sine of theta is equal to negative one half. So let's recall that this is cosine theta comma sine theta is each of the ordered pairs on my unit circle. So if I want sine theta to be negative one half, I'm looking just for where is the Y value negative one half. And that's here at 7 pi over 6 and here at 11 pi over 6. So I'm going to say theta is equal to 7 pi over 6 or theta is equal to 11 pi over 6. Now, in addition to that, if you'll recall, they've not restricted our domain. So they've said essentially it's the entire real number system. And we also know that any coterminal angle to 7 pi over 6 would be if I added 2 pi or 4 pi or 6 pi or if I subtracted 2 pi or 4 pi or 6 pi. And so all we have to do on those is just say plus 2 pi n. And yes, you have to specify that n is an integer. So integers obviously are the positive and negative whole numbers. So n could be 0 or 1 or 2 or negative 1 or negative 2. And that's where those that period of 2 pi is going to come in. So I can keep adding that 2 pi. And I'm going to do the same thing here for um, 11 pi over 6. And that's all I had to do for that first one. Like I said, very straightforward. Now, second one, not quite as straightforward, but still pretty easy. I'm looking for tangent of theta is equal to 1. Now, hopefully we know that tangent of theta is equal to y over x or sine theta over cosine theta. So essentially, if I want them to reduce to 1, I'm looking for where are the x and y values exactly the same. And that would be here, radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2, which is at pi over 4 and here at 5 pi over 4. So I can either say that this is, let's see, pi over 4 plus 2 pi over, uh, 2 pi n, where n is an integer, or 5 pi over 4 plus 2n, 2 pi n where n is an integer. But again, because these are exactly pi units away, if I add pi to pi over 4, it's 5 pi over 4. So I can actually make this one easier. 
and say it's pi over 4 and then intervals of pi. So it's just pi over 4 plus pi n, where n is an integer. So both of those um, are now solved. And again, fairly straightforward using that unit circle. Let's take a look at two more examples. We'll start with 2 sine squared theta is equal to 1. Of course, we would like to get sine squared theta by itself before we try to look at the unit circle. So instead, let's go ahead and divide each side by 2. And that's going to give me sine squared theta is equal to 1 half. So that's a good first step. Now from here, we really just want sine of theta, not sine squared theta. So I'm going to take the square root of each side because remember that sine squared theta is the same thing as sine theta squared. And so if I take the square root, that's just going to give me sine of theta. On the right hand side, the square root of one is one and the square root of two is radical two. I don't want to leave it like that because of course I would like to rationalize the denominator. I don't like radicals in my denominator. So I'm going to multiply by radical two divided by radical two, which is really just equivalent to ones. It's okay to do that because I'm multiplying by one. I'm just changing the form. So one times radical two is radical two, and then radical two times radical two is radical four, which is two. Now remember we took the square root so we know that this is actually plus or minus. So I'm looking for anywhere in our domain where sine of theta, which is the y value, is plus or minus radical 2 over 2. So that occurs here at pi over 4, again at 3 pi over 4, again at 5 pi over 4, and again at 7 pi over 4. And that's all of my solutions in that domain. Let's take a look at the other question. The other question says tangent squared theta is equal to secant theta minus 1. I'm going to use a Pythagorean identity. This is the tangent squared theta is the same thing as secant squared theta minus 1. So I'm going to replace tangent squared theta with secant squared theta minus 1 is equal to secant theta minus 1. So just rewriting the right side. Let's add 1 to each side. That gives me secant squared theta is equal to secant theta. Let's divide each side by secant of theta because I really just want... I don't want that squared value. So secant squared theta divided by secant theta is secant theta. And secant theta divided by secant theta is 1. So I'm looking for anywhere where the secant would be equal to 1. Well, we know the secant is actually 1 divided by cosine theta. So 1 divided by 1 would obviously give us 1. So I'm really looking for where is cosine of theta equal to 1. And cosine of theta is that x value, and that occurs here um, at 0 or 2 pi. So 0 or 2 pi. We're going to finish up section P.4 next um, by looking at the graphs of trigonometric functions and, of course, how to shift that graph.